Have you heard the news? Trash Cult is now live on Kickstarter, and it is one of those games that you just kind of play it. It's got some great take that mechanics, and then you realize you fell in love with it. Now, in this game, you are going to be playing as one of these particular trash animals who worships a specific type of food. You've got skunks who love pie. You've got your raccoons who love pizza. You've got rats who love donuts. And you've got squirrels who love cookies. And the goal of the game is quite simple. You want to be the first player to get a specific amount of the foods you worship into your shrine and at least one active cult member, either from your animal type or of a converted enemy's type, into your cult. Once you do that, by the end of your turn, you are now the winner. Now, the amount of food items you're going to need is going to vary based on player count, so you want to be mindful of that as well. In a two-player game, each player is going to need six food in their shrine, and one active cult member, be it natural or converted. And natural means that if you're the squirrels, you play squirrels face up in front of you, and those are natural cult members. They're already a part of your group. A converted member is any of the other animal fashions, such as rats, raccoons, and skunks. In a three-player game, you're going to need five food in your shrine and one animal cult member. And in a four-player game, you're gonna need four food in your shrine and one animal cult member as well. Now, the gameplay is quite simple. Each player is going to be dealt five cards to start with. On your turn, you can perform a series of different actions, but only two of them at a time. One of those actions is to recruit an active cult member. And to do so, all you do is play a card of your animal cult's type from your hand to the play area in front of you. You can also hold a hostage, which means you take an animal from another enemy's cult type and lay that on the table in front of you sideways, face up. I can also add one of my enemy cult's food, so pizza, pie, or cookies, sideways on the table in front of me, and that's my stash. You can convert a hostage into an active cult member by playing a convert hostage card onto an enemy's hostage card you have in play, and then converting it vertically into your active cult side. You can add one of your food cards to your shrine, which means take one of the food cards that your cult worships, so for example, the rats, I would have to have, I believe, donuts, and I would place a donut face up on my side, and that would be in my shrine. I can also perform a sacrifice. Now, a sacrifice means I discard the required cards to fulfill the sacrifice, which will be listed on the animal or food card that you're going to sacrifice, and then you're going to perform an action based on which one it is. If I sacrifice a squirrel and cookies, I can summon one food or one animal from the active deck. If I sacrifice raccoons and pizza, I can steal one of my cult's foods from an enemy stash. If I sacrifice skunks and pies, I can steal one of my enemies' worship foods from their shrine, which effectively prevents them from winning the game quicker. If I sacrifice rats and donuts, I can summon one of my food from the trash pile, which is the discard pile, basically. I can also perform actions based on other cards. Now, when I perform a sacrifice, that's going to trigger a chaos card, and chaos cards have various effects on them that affect the entire table. So everyone in the game has to do whatever's on the chaos card. And there's a defense against that, but I'll talk about that part later. Other actions I can perform on my turn are play a cheap sacrifice, which I play the possum card, and that allows me to use any one of the other animals or my own animals cult powers or sacrifice powers without ensuing the chaos that follows a regular sacrifice and without having to discard any animals or any snack foods in my stash or cult. I can steal a card using a spy pigeon to blindly steal the card from another player's hand or I can use the poison their punch card and that will actively destroy every member of a player's active cult. If I don't like any of those options I could just discard one card from my hand to the discard pile. Now, because that only counts as one action, if I don't want to play any cards, period, I would have to discard two cards from my hand into the discard pile to count as both actions. Now, I can perform any of those actions once, up to two actions per turn again, so I can choose from any one, or I can perform the same action twice. It all depends on how I want to play and the strategy that I'm going with. Now, in defense to cards, there are protection spells. Protection spells are what you do if someone happens to play a sacrifice or, uh, or perform a sacrifice. Those cards will then block the sacrifice, but they'll still have to sacrifice whatever cards they played in order to trigger the sacrifice, and it also stops the chaos. Now, defensive cards also work against the poison the punch. So if someone plays a poison their punch and you play a defensive spell, you block the poison the punch card. 
There's also a hide card that you can play, which looks like a trash can, and that card is going to protect you from the effects of a chaos card. So if you get a chaos card and it happens to be something bad and you don't want to follow those particular actions or it'll hurt your game too much, you can play a hide card if you have one in your hand directly from your hand to the discard pile to prevent having to follow those effects. Now, once you have all the required cult members and food items in your shrine, you are declared the winner. And that's how you play Trash Cult. Check it out. It's from Fox Hand Creatives. Hannah, thanks for sending me a copy. It is live on Kickstarter now and already doubled its funding goal. So keep it going so those stretch goals can get unlocked and get yourself a copy. Thanks for watching.